I want to see how the media covered the Elon Musk stuff, and then we'll get back to that. Donald Trump returned to Twitter last night. It's now called X for a long conversation with Elon Musk that was hampered by technical issues. Rachel Scott is tracking the race. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, George, good morning to you. This all got off to a very rocky start. That conversation was delayed by more than 40 minutes because of those tech issues. Elon Musk said he wanted to have this conversation so that the former president could appeal to independent voters, but Trump fell into a very familiar pattern of controversial statements, insults, and attacks. Overnight, Donald Trump's botch returned to the platform that once banished him for posting false claims about the election. The company saying at the time the account was permanently suspended due to the risk of further incitement of violence. It was reinstated by Elon Musk in November of 2022. One of the funniest things that Elon Musk immediately did was call this a distributed denial of service attack, DDoS. Like, as in people were attacking his, his website. Except if, if you are actually victim to a DDoS attack, a couple things happen that did not happen in this situation. Other parts of the website would also shut down, okay? Other parts of the website were shut down. They didn't. The rest of the website, for, you know, <laughs> for better or for worse, was still working. Okay? And not only that, but also, you can track DDoS attacks. Like, it's not like, it's not untraceable. But Elon personally turned around Elon personally turned around and fucking went along with it. Then Verge and other outlets went, <laughs> went and asked people on the engineering side at Twitter. And they were like, yeah, no, that didn't happen. He, mo he's likely lying about it. It depends on, you're just making stuff on, up on DDoS, bro. If you actually think that this Twitter space got DDoSed, I, you are exactly the type of person. You are the reason why Elon Musk is like the number one figure that crypto scammers use to dupe people, which is ironic because that's precisely what they were doing yesterday as well. There were a million different YouTube links that was supposedly the Elon Musk Trump conversation. Some of them had 187,000 live concurrent viewers. Many of them are botted. Okay, but I do find it, I do find it funny and rather strange that a lot of Elon's fan base are so primed into getting duped by cryptocurrency rug pulls. I wonder what that is about. Okay. <laughs> Why are you cosplaying as an IT guy? You know nothing about DDoS attacks. I'm so confused as to why people are saying uh, that I am wrong on this, okay? I know a thing or two about it from, you know, being a Twitch streamer and, and having to deal with, like, an army of IT geeks who despise me and spend every waking moment trying to fuck with me online. It, it comes with the territory. It's one of those things that you kind of have to learn. Okay. And also DDoS attacks are like, not exactly the most complicated thing. Like we sometimes end up doing a DDoS organically on a website that doesn't have servers uh, that are ready for the additional traffic. Like I, I sometimes will click on a website and it will go down, especially if it's like an older website and the servers are not like, yeah, the hug of death, like, uh, and the, and the servers are not primed for like 30,000 psychos clicking at the same exact time. load balancers baby yeah not only that but i have had lol this is not a ddos it's just overloading no i know i know but it's it's similar to how uh it's similar to how a, di a distributed denial of service attack works that's it 
You're just... Huh. The only difference is you're intentionally trying to overload, overload, people, uh, overload a server and brick it. You can target a service. A uh, whole Twitter doesn't have to go down. I think that's why they don't have to agree. They are not agreeing with it. The problem with Twitter and the problem with X uh, spaces in general was that it just wasn't primed for it. That's it. And it's additionally ironic because he had done this already. He did this once. Well, not once, twice, but the second time it didn't matter because it didn't get that much traffic. But, like, he already did this with fucking Ron DeSantis. And he bricked it. And then Donald Trump shit on him for it. Which is why it's fucking hilarious that, like, he did not look back at it at all. He did not look back at it at all and be like, let's fix this so it never happens again. And he just went YOLO mode. Now, part of that is because Elon also eliminated a shit ton of the workforce. Okay? Not all the positions that he eliminated were like the, the queer Marxist brigade that is working on DEI or whatever. A big chunk of the people that he laid off and, and the only people that he kept on board were the H-1B visa workers that he could just basically fucking threaten with deportation. So they are way less likely to uh, say no when he's like, you have to work overtime. Okay. He, bas he, he literally went in and was like, yeah, we're going to work on a skeleton budget. Including people that work on, you know, the back end. If you don't have a cloud infrastructure team who can immediately free up more resources on the network, you're boned. 99% of chance that Twitter already laid off those people. That's what I'm saying. You DDoS Twitch, not a specific streamer. DDoS attacks an entire server hosting a website. No, that's not true. What are you talking about? If they can figure out what your IP address is, at any point they can they can target. No, if they if they figure out what your IP is, you're cooked. What are you talking about? Twitch streamers, uh, Twitch streamers have had to literally move houses and shit if they can't get their ISPs to actually change their goddamn IP address. I can't believe we're having this fucking semantics argument. Anyway, let's continue. Let's just get back to the video. When Musk bought the company. Please listen to the experts on this one. It's an easy Google. Trump returning to the conversation Monday for a conversation with Musk. Technical issues delaying it from the start for more than 40 minutes. Musk blaming a so-called denial of service attack, a kind of cyber attack that floods a server with traffic to force it offline, saying the massive attack illustrates there's a lot of opposition to people just hearing what President Trump has to say, though we provided no evidence of such a cyber attack. All right, hello everyone. Um, so uh, my apologies for the late start. Users getting messages like this, saying details not available. Those who were able to get into the live stream, welcomed by hold music, then silence. X saying more than a million people eventually signed on. I'm looking at the numbers. You got a lot of people listening. Musk said he wanted Trump to reach open-minded independent voters, kicking off the conversation by asking Trump about the attempt on his life. What was it like for you? Not pleasant. I have <laughs> not to be pleasant. I said there was blood. <laughs> I had more blood. I Bro, what's funny about this is that he didn't just want to talk about the assassination. He wanted to talk about DEI or deep state conspiracies. And Donald Trump was not about it at all. So he just kept egging him on and on and on. He just kept repeating it like, but you know, it's, it's crazy that, you know, they, they shot you from that distance, right? I mean, it's like, why did they not have anyone there? Why did they not have anyone on that roof? What was going on? Two things were happening there that Elon Musk was not aware of. Number one, Donald Trump wants that to be a perfect shooter, okay? Because God saved his life. 
That's what he wants to like present it as. That's what he believes. Okay. So he doesn't want this to be like a failure of all sorts or like a secret DEI initiative or whatever. So he's not going to sit there and be like, yeah, I can't believe like the deep state is after me in this regard. Okay. And the other reason is that Donald Trump personally loves the secret service. He does. He thinks they saved his life because they did. So like when that's the reason why so many people kept talking about DEI, 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 except Donald Trump has not said that at all. So far, he has only said how awesome the Secret Service is. If you notice, he always talks about how great they are, how wonderful they are, how sick they are. Okay? <laughs> He's like one of the only people on the Republican side that hasn't been consistently shitting on the secret service because in his mind, he's like, they saved me. Okay. Push came to shove and these motherfuckers saved my ass. I respect it. I love them. <laughs> so he just didn't bite that at all. Oh, no, I had I didn't know I had that much blood. Over two hours, the former president drifted into bringing up false claims, insults, and controversial statements. Trump praising his relationships with authoritarian leaders, saying he got along well with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin. And I got along with Kim Jong-un. We had dinner, we had everything, and he, he really liked me, and I got along with him. Trump also describing a conversation he had with Putin about invading Ukraine, claiming he told him not to invade. The former president laying out what he would do if reelected, insisting one of his first acts would be shutting down the Department of Education. This is that shit was kind of crazy, bro. He's like, he knew? What the fuck? <laughs> He's like, yeah, Putin hit me up before invading Ukraine, and I was like, don't do it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's kind of odd. This is where I, I need an Elon Musk. I need somebody that has a lot of strength and courage and smarts. I want a closed up Department of Education, move education back to the states where, yeah. where, where states like Iowa, where states like. Bro, this is like literally Project 2025, by the way. Um, which is why it's like hilarious that Donald Trump's like, I don't know what project 2025 is. It's nerd shit. And that's precisely the reason why I told you guys. Okay. I told you guys time and time again, that there is functionally no difference between like the Republican party and the heritage foundation, because the heritage foundation is the think tank that writes the Republican policies and project 2025 is not specifically about like the upcoming Trump term, but a long-term commitment to abolishing the Department of Education, the EPA, all of these federal regulatory bodies. This is something that this is something that the Republican Party has been actively pushing towards. It's not new. It was Project 2024. It was Project 2023. It's also Project 2025. Okay. I know that a lot of people are primed towards project 2025 and it's like a really great way to, to, you know, focus people's resentment, uh, and, and focus people's frustration towards one thing, but it's not new. It has been a, uh, this has been in the works for a very long time. It's never stopped. And that is precisely the reason why Donald Trump uh, saying, I want to abolish the Department of Education while simultaneously saying Project 2025 who is ridiculous. Okay. I had a tweet on this that, that was a hit tweet as well. It blew my mind that, uh, and I, I'm shocked that the media is not covering it, but it blew my mind that this started, this conversation, this part of the conversation started with Trump and Elon praising sweden norway and even china's education systems like they literally started off by being like sweden norway even china their education is so much better and then turned around and was like and that's why we need to abolish the department of education and bring it back to the states it is 
nutty. Okay, completely nutty. It is nonsensical. The idea that Donald Trump does not endorse the Heritage Foundation uh, is, is so stupid. The idea that Donald Trump does not endorse Project 2025 is so stupid. You got to be a real fucking sucker if you don't, you know, if you, you got to be a real stupid sucker if you think that, like, this guy is not going to do all of those things. Okay? I noticed that the fake ass journalists didn't thank you for letting them listen to the interview. I know. It's messed up. You got to have a stupid face. Stupid, stupid face, Biden. <laughs> what does your mug say? My mug says, I just want to drink coffee and watch Bill Maher. Okay. That's what it says. I just want to drink coffee and watch Bill Maher. It's a meme. It's a meme mug that one of you motherfuckers sent me. It's like Idaho. You know, not every state will do great. The Harris campaign highlighting that clip on social media and responding to the interview saying, Trump's entire campaign is in service of people like Elon Musk and himself, self-obsessed rich guys who will sell out the middle class and who cannot run a live stream in the year of 2024. The Harris campaign also accusing Trump of slurring his words. The former president brushing off dire warnings about the impact of climate change, saying rising sea levels will lead to, quote, more oceanfront property. And he promised the largest deportation in history, attacking Vice President Kamala Harris on the administration's handling of the border, calling migrants non-productive people. Trump casting Harris. That was another one that uh, I, I it made me lose my fucking mind. Like, it's one of those things that is just like. You say that shit immediately. I'm like, you are, you are such a fucking freak, dude. <sighs> that was another thing that really, really frustrated me. Um, having two billionaire fail sons talking about how the Guatemalan dude trekking for thousands of miles to come to work here for pennies on the dollar is actually unproductive. Like that is, you are. I don't even know what to say to that. You are so delusional, dude. You are such a fucking delusional piece of shit. Like, what are you talking about, man? That I don't even think that reads like, I don't even think most normal Americans who might even be fucking racist themselves agree with that. You know what I mean? Rich parents and connections, right? And all these people are like rich parents and connections, rich parents and connections. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, just like me, me and Donald Trump, me and Elon Musk, we're all in the same category, just a couple billionaires, you know? It's just crazy because like, on the one hand, they say they're unproductive. On the other hand, they say they stole our jobs. Like, it does not have to make sense. Because it is for the absolute dumbest people. This is not a coherent narrative. This is for... This is not a coherent narrative. This is simply for the dumbest, most racist person. Okay? I don't think Fed Trump was a billionaire. Um, I think he was a multimillionaire. And... I know. I think he was a billionaire too. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he definitely had a couple hundred M's at the very least and literally kept Donald Trump afloat the entire time. So I don't know what you're talking about there. He, he, he tried to keep his fucking, he tried to keep his casinos alive when they were failing. What? Ain't no fucking way. Wait, what? Faker, which three celebrities do you want to have a meal with? Faker says, Sung Hung Min, Wu Sung Hyok, and Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. Huh?
Bro, he just wants he no. You only say this when you're hungry. Okay? You only say this when you're hungry, okay? And I'm not talking about Korean barbecue, okay? I'm talking money bags. I'm talking fucking gold bullion. I'm talking different levels, okay? I'm talking I'm not even I'm not talking about like Faker and Tyler One getting together to eat uh, at that Vegas spot. I'm talking the fattest stacks you've ever done seen, okay? Chowder, cheddar, moolah. These are concepts of the past. MBS, a great man. Why are you being racist? Shut the fuck up. Bro, this... <coughs> what? Bro! What is happening, bro? Do we have, like, MBS bots in here? Bro. What? That's crazy, okay? <laughs> Even MBS's family doesn't think he's great. <laughs> Chatter's in here chirping. That's that's sick. That's awesome. Wow. The the sports washing is so goddamn successful. Uh this is why. This is why Saudi Arabia has been cooking with the sports washing, okay? This is why they've been doing the damn thing nonstop. You might have been thinking like, why the fuck do they spend so much goddamn money on this shit? Well, here it is. Bro is the leader of a theocracy, okay? A, a Islamic theocratic monarch that did a genocide in Yemen. What are we talking? They did 9-11 too. Like his family did 9-11. But also on top of that, like he also did a genocide in Yemen. Not that long ago. Breaking, MBS family releases a statement from their internment at the Ritz-Carlton to say Hassan Habib is wrong. We love our king. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Walls is speaking. Okay, everybody calm down, man. Earlier, we've done a few door knocks. We've done a few... Uh Phone banks. We've done a I mean, this is like, this is going to be kind of boring. Like, it's not like a rally. You know what I mean? He's talking to the AFS uh, CME. Like, he's talking to the municipal workers. He's talking at the municipal workers conference in Los Angeles. Like, y'all are, like, chill out. Okay? We'll look at some of the high notes. I like Tim Walls more than you, Hassan. Sorry, his vibes are better. Breaking U.S. Secretary of State approved sale of over $18.8 billion worth of military equipment to Israel. Hell yeah, baby. Unlimited. <laughs> it's like the fucking... It's like the, uh, the, the, the SpongeBob meme with Patrick. <laughs> Unlimited genocide dollars. <laughs> Unlimited billions unlocked to Israel. <laughs> Literally every day, they're like, actually... It's not enough. Last week, we released $3.5 billion, okay? But that wasn't enough. Another $18 billion unlocked, baby. Isn't that crazy? We just have no money in the bank for healthcare. <laughs> sorry, guys. Hey, sorry, by the way. We just don't have any money in the bank for fucking housing our veterans. You know what I mean? Bro, stop laughing. What can I do? What can I do but laugh at this point? This is so gross, dude.
<laughs> and before you go, uh, excuse me, that says sale. What money are they buying it with? Chat will be like, uh, excuse me, they're actually selling these weapons, and therefore the United States of America is getting money, not realizing that who's paying Israel to buy the fucking weapons? Whose money? Where do you think this is coming from? You think Israel just like, Israel was just like, yeah, dude, we have a, a litany of natural resources that is so bountiful that that uh, we we seemingly uh, have been able to uh, we're we're really sitting on a fat surplus this year, okay? So we just had an extra eighteen billion <laughs> lying around. Oh. Is giving nine-year-old using parents money to buy parents birthday gift? Yeah, exactly. All right. Anyway, unlimited, unlimited genocide, baby. All day, every day. Um, wait, hold on. Okay, we'll we'll get to that stuff in a second. Let's continue. With the Trump as liberal and attacking interview. Jewish people who support her, repeating claims that have been widely called anti-Semitic. And I say, if you're a Jewish person or if you believe in Israel, if you're a, a person that, you know, is a very pro-Israel, if you vote for her, it's worse than Biden. And Biden was bad. But if you vote for her, you ought to have your head examined. Also at one point saying the new Time magazine cover of Harris looks like his wife. I saw a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And uh, actually, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. She looked... Bro, that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think people agreed with me on this, but like <laughs> I said when he was talking about that, he, he came across as SD more than horny. Like... It's like, she looks so pretty, so beautiful, just like Melania. And it wasn't like a, like, I personally think that wasn't like him being horny. That was more so him being zesty. Like, he, he, she's a pretty woman. Okay, like queen respecting another queen. Yeah. She <laughs> didn't look yeah. she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course she's a beautiful woman, so we'll leave it at that, right? And in a sign of just how much the former president has struggled to pivot to a new rival, Trump also Honestly, it's just a weird thing to say. Oh, dude, one hundred percent. Because not everyone will read it as like not everyone will read it in a zesty way that I did. Most people will look at it and be like, You're gross as fuck, bro. Why are you saying that about the person you're running against? Camilla. So spend time attacking President Biden, even though he's no longer in the race. Don't forget, I beat, I beat Biden. Um, I wonder if anybody tracked this, but like, honestly, Donald Trump spoke significantly more about Biden than he did about Camilla, with the exception of like calling her radical Marxist. And then at points of uh, saying she was pretty. Like, he just kind of daggered Biden the entire time. And it's like, yeah, we agree, man. Yeah, he sucks. Okay. Like, I don't know if you know this, but, like, you're not running against him anymore. And it's so obvious that he's just, like, ha he's he's been so primed into running against. He's been so primed into running against Biden that he just, like, keeps forgetting that he's not running against Biden. And just keeps daggering Biden. But he's not running against Biden. So who cares what you have to say about Joe Biden, you know? Uh, he failed in the debate miserably. 
The Democratic National Convention is now less than a week away. The White House says that President Biden will address the convention on Monday and lay out the stakes of this election. We are also told that former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama will be speaking at the convention as well, George. And Rachel, we also heard from the FBI, FBI yesterday. They're now inter investigating foreign interference in both campaigns. Mm -hmm. Exactly, George. We know that the FBI has already been looking into these claims by the Trump campaign that it was hacked by Iran. And now sources tell ABC News that the FBI is also looking into attempts by Iran to target the Biden-Harris campaign. The alleged spear phishing email was sent before President Biden dropped out of the race. A Biden campaign official tells ABC News they are not aware of any security breaches, George. Rachel Scott, thanks. This space is not available. Five words and a failure tonight for a much-anticipated conversation Oof. between Elon Musk and Donald Trump. That X event that everyone was supposed to watch, well, it broke the Internet, and not in the Beyoncé kind of way. If you are trying to click over to watch that Trump-Musk talk, which I believe is still ongoing, for most of the time, you couldn't do it for about 40 minutes. And when the interview finally did get underway, Trump went into his normal stump speech including more Kamala Harris insults. Uh, this was, Tara, uh, just a, a, maybe a, an, an allegory of what's been going on with the Trump campaign for some time. Yeah. 40 minutes on hold. They start off, it's, it's meandering, and he's doing exactly what a lot of people are trying to tell him not to do, which is attacking Harris not on substance, but just because she exists. Yeah, I mean, this shouldn't be news. This is what Trump does. He does the complete opposite of what everyone else tells him to do. He's petulant and intransigent. And he thinks that he's his own best campaign manager, consultant, political uh, communications um, guru. And there's a reason why he's now losing. There's a reason why Kamala Harris, the swing in the polls, that Kamala Harris has overtaken him in swing states. People are tired of this act. It's a, it's a Vegas lounge act now. He needs new material. And the insults are something that, particularly for moderates and moderate women, who are an important constituency, if Trump thinks he's going to win this time around, they don't want to hear this. And so the people who have been running his campaign are very smart veteran political operatives. And now they're facing the, 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 the time, the honeymoon period of keeping a disciplined Trump together is over. This is Donald Trump unleashed. He's going to do what he wants to do. And it's not working for him. And the polls show why it isn't. I'm going to play a little bit of what what he's been saying on this uh, X stream. He talks about um, Harris and really seems to be still grappling with the fact that she's now the candidate and it's not Joe Biden anymore. They're doing it right now while this third rate phony candidate. Don't forget, I beat I beat Biden. Uh, he failed in the debate miserably. We cannot have a Democrat. We cannot have her. She's incompetent. She's as bad as Biden. Another part that was really funny on the interview was when he was talking about how he beat Biden. <clears throat> and he was like, right after the debate, they said on CNN that my performance was spectacular. And then they stopped talking about my performance and started talking about how bad Biden was. And one thing that I think Trump doesn't understand is that his performance was not spectacular at all. As a matter of fact, his performance was ass on that debate. It's just that Biden was so much worse that people didn't even pay attention to the insanity. Like, people did not pay attention to Donald Trump's, like, 10 million Guatemalans are doing rapes every moment in America type shit, type narratives, because everyone was like in utter shock in a state of panic that the fucking president was mentally decrepit. That's it. He got lucky in that situation, which is why I find it additionally odd that he, ke he keeps like, I guess, doing a little bit of revisionist history there. Ain't nobody thought his performance was great. As a matter of fact, the Democrats kept chirping, and even the liberal commentators kept chirping about how, like, why is nobody paying attention to Trump's lies? He kept lying over and over again. And it's like, because nobody wanted to care, nobody cared about that, because the other thing was, like, the house is on fire. You know?
it's, it's, it's like watching Grumpy Old Man or something. There's just, I don't mind attacking a person for their policies or their positions, but he's just sort of griping just because she exists, to your point. And I think we know why he's griping because she exists. She's a black woman. And everything that I've seen in the course of his career, and I know that he has black women in his circle, and I know he's appointed Amarosa and all of that. I know all of that background. But also know when he's confronted and being held accountable by black women, time and time again, he has shown to be someone who is uncomfortable in that situation. And I think he's complaining more because it's Kamala Harris, a black woman, than any other factor. There's nothing that he's saying about her, however, that wasn't actually said by Biden campaign personnel in leaks to the press for months and months before the hot swap unfolded. For literally about three plus years, you had folks around President Biden who were leaking against, undermining, characterizing Kamala Harris as a disaster, as unprepared. How do you know this? Because of extensive reporting, and drawing on White House how sources. How come former President Trump doesn't know this? If you've known for three years this woman was coming, and now she's here, and you're confused about sorry, what I'm to so, do. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't sufficiently clear. What I'm saying is that what he is saying now, when he is uh, diminishing her capacity and what have you, these were all things that were standard talking points coming from Democrats okay. who were anxious Listen. about her weaknesses. So now, minute, only just... over the last month or so Listen. has the narrative entirely changed. <clears throat> Bro, you can't, you can't, like, you can't claim foul. Like, you can't just, like, be upset that the media is responding to the, the momentum that Kamala Harris has been able to put together. He's not wrong in terms of, like, Kamala's weaknesses. These are things that I've also personally mentioned, right? But, like, it just, there is one aspect of this that these guys are just, like, very upset about, which is that people don't care. <laughs> that's how, that's how fucking... That's how much they, won. don't mind the Democratic Party's platform that, like, a generic Democrat leading the ticket is good for them. And that's how much they despise Joe Biden. Okay? Because you hate black women, too? Yes! <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> like, they don't care. People don't care about it. A lot of people... A lot of people were just like, bro, I don't want Biden. He's so fucking old. People vote on vibes, okay? People vote on vibes. And the vibes were atrocious with Brandon. Bro said that was a joke so fast. You got them boys terrified. Yeah, good, because I hear that all the time. And I never want anybody to do that. There's the new Hassan Twitter complaint today. Yeah. Unrelated, but do you know the story of Nicole McCabe? Random Aussie who lived in Israel. Mossad stole her password, uh, passport to use the cover ID for a spy. Then she was wanted for an assassination in Dubai as a result and had to get a new identity because Mossad was like, okay, whatever, deal with it. I did not know that, but that's not even remotely shocking. I thought you said Marat stole the password. No, Marat would never do that. His vibes are great. What are you talking about? Brandon's vibes? Brandon's vibes are not great. Okay. Brandon's vibes were not great at all. All right, let's continue. About this because the press you, no longer felt obliged to protect so President you, Biden. Are you suggesting so that this is originating because Donald Trump is following the intel of Democrats and this based solely upon the intel of Democrats and not some long standing representation <laughs> of how he feels about American people since the 1970s? No, okay, I think no. what he's suggesting <laughs> is that. This is not just off of what Democrats have said, but Democrats have also said some of the same things Trump has said. And so him saying these things is not something new that no one's ever said before that she's incompetent. He wasn't that bad, dude. Listen, brother, I get it. Okay, I get it. You desperately want to get back to two partners at the top of the hour to serve a three-minute ad break. But Biden was so bad that the $5 a month subscription fee under the Brandon regime turned into $6 a month, okay? That's how bad the brand inflation hit the economy, including Twitch, okay? No more two-parters. You can't do that. I know your ass was trying to do that two-parter, okay? 40-month subscriber. You think you can sneak that in there, dude? Come on, you know better. Take an hour off.
Okay. I'm not even letting you go. Oh, I wasn't trying to do a two parter. I'm just giving you an hour off. No more two parters. Okay. Yesterday I got absolutely cooked multiple times. Danny Programmy, thank you for the five gifted subs. Okay. I got cooked yesterday multiple times. You can do it. I believe in you. You gave me a whole ass day, the injustice. I, I felt bad because he, he, you know, I pre-watched the two-parter and I didn't even let him do the two-parter. That's why I only gave him an hour off. El Ego. It's not. You've been slipping lately? No, you catch me. You catch me slipping when I'm feeling good. Like, I'm going to get got. I'm going to get got. Okay. But that two parters are, are, I want you to be better. I just want you to be better. That's what it is. I want, I want the base to get better. Danny programming. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Just an ad break now, by the way. And you can point to the policies. You can look at so many policies throughout yes, this administration can, that she has doesn't. to own yes, that can, will hurt her in swing states. Yeah, the idea, uh, just to be clear, I mean, I understand that, that maybe there were some Democrats privately who were nervous about Harris, but I don't know that you have Democrats calling her phony, incompetent, you, that's third-grade candidate. That's what I was about that, to that say. That is well I must beyond. have missed where Democrats called her a bum. I must have missed, missed where they questioned her ethnicity. I must have missed when Democrats uh, called her low IQ and stupid. Yeah, they didn't do any of that. But the Democrats were obviously worried about Kamala Harris's weaknesses. As a matter of fact, I would say that that is the reason why Joe Biden chose her. Shrimps for Bernie. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Um, that's uh, part of the reason why Joe Biden picked her as the VP, because he did not want a VP that could like outshine him. Okay. But having said that, Having said that, currently, the momentum behind Kamala Harris is very real. And of course, the media is going to cover it because it's happening. It's a real thing that's happening. Of course, the media is going to fucking talk about this unique, historic uh, change up in a fucking ticket 80 days out of a goddamn election and, and what, the, what the consequences have been, both positive and negative, mostly positive for the Democrats. Like... You can't just sit there and be like, it's no fair. Why don't you talk about Kamala Harris's weaknesses? Like, what do you mean? That's not the story. That could become the story if she fails. Like I said, this momentum is very real. And you can either lean into it and keep putting out daggers. Okay? DNC is a big... Uh, the DNC is going to be a big deal to continue this momentum. Okay? <clears throat> Or, or you just, you know, uh, you, you fuck it up. You fuck it up big time and you do the old school Democratic Party instincts and you don't lean on like a Waltzian momentum with progressive policies showing America that these progressive policies are not radical at all, that these guys are fucking weirdo losers who keep complaining about like actually good, solid progressive policies. And that's it. New Florida poll, Trump, Republican, 52, Harris at 44, Kennedy at 3. That's actually kind of surprising that RFK only has 3% in Florida. I would have expected him to have much higher in Florida. I would have thought that would be his state, you know? Like, it's kind of it's kind of shocking. So... But um, having said that, having said that, let's continue. Bid, and all of the litany of awful insults that Donald Trump has levied against Kamala Harris since she's been in the race. But did well, you miss when she forget, couldn't even get a couple she, percentage points in 2020 this, to make it okay. to the first primary? This isn't, this isn't the first time Donald Trump She wasn't Trump has, wildly popular. It doesn't matter. She's the vice president of the United States, and um, she's beating Donald Trump right now. So, but what also we are <laughs> all not, that matters what, is what, what happens also we're on November 5th. Is that Donald Trump's history... Oh, so polls don't matter any longer. This is, this is the... Everybody does this copium. It's mind-numbing to me, okay? The Trump team was literally posterizing all the polls when they were cooking Biden. But the moment that this switch up happens and the polls reflect that reality and the momentum shifts in the other direction, they're like, oh, polls don't matter. And it's the same as like the Biden dead enders in the 
liberal media space that kept saying polls don't matter. Polls don't matter. That Biden is losing. Polls don't matter. It's so funny. It's just like, bro, look at the fucking polls. Look at why people are responding in the way that they're responding. Sometimes it is going to be a genuine crisis that you can't actually message out of. Okay? For Donald Trump, a person with maxed out uh, name recognition, it is a little bit of a genuine crisis. Because, like, it's hard for him to, to squeeze out new demographics. Like, what is he going to do? Go after, you know, what is he going to do? Go after fucking young people? Like, is he going to be able to convince young people to go out and vote for him? Like, people that don't remember what it was like to be a full-grown adult under his uh, administration, under his rule? It's just, like, there's no, there's no pivot point for Trump. It's very difficult for him. And he's also flailing. The history of insulting women is very long. As a matter of fact, and her it's, history it's of long, failing is long, long as well. When it comes and to documented these that how many times when he was at the bully pulpit, he insulted what, women what journalists repeatedly, this... including you, Abby, who he also called stupid, which you're not. You went to Harvard, and you are far from that. And this is what Donald Trump does. He doesn't like to be held accountable. So because he is now in a position where he now is being held accountable for what he said, we know already that he has a history of being a sexist, and now he cannot this is grapple base management. with the fact. These are not the arguments that are actually effective for Kamala Harris. Oh, if no? you look at the recent, Why is she up for example, points? Reed Hoffman's group Blueprint has dis He's not wrong. Um, talking about like Donald Trump being misogynistic or whatever, that doesn't matter. It hardens his support and his base who are looking for that and find that to be good. Um, there's a difference between like just consistently saying Trump is like a misogynist. Everybody fucking knows that people have already literally made up their minds on this. This is why I always say, don't ever fucking bring that up. Just don't just everybody knows it. Nobody gives a shit. Okay. People already made that point over and over again. Talk about abortion instead. Talk about how Trump's weirdo behavior and Trump's misogyny actually ends up harming women directly okay talk about how it has already harmed women because people know people know he's a misogynist okay they know he won uh the white women vote by 52 percent twice okay twice he won the white women vote again so if you want to fucking eat away at that base of support you just don't, don't break up the misogyny shit. Like, everybody knows it, okay? Everybody knows that shit. Just simply talk about the policies and simply talk about how all of those things are already harming people. I, I wrote about this a while back. I was like, a couple days ago, where I was like, listen, Democrats, if they want to win, they got to keep, uh, they got to keep talking about what they're going to do for people and what they have done for people so far and maybe what the Republicans have done to the population okay if democrats want to lose they talk about how like sexist and misogynistic donald trump is and they talk about the identity of the candidate without tying it back to like the actual the actual policy positions the underlying misogyny is always going to be there most people are misogynistic themselves we live in a patriarchal structure women a lot of women also uh have a tendency to have internalized misogyny you can't, this is not a good argument, okay? The better argument in this situation is to be like, he's weird, he's gross, he's a loser, but also, of course he's saying this kind of shit. After all, look at what his administration did to women's reproductive rights, okay? <laughs> that shit did not work for Hillary Clinton at all. And as a matter of fact, Joe Biden didn't do that because he was an old white guy, okay? Okay? That was one of the most like refreshing aspects, in my opinion, in terms of winning a fucking election that the Democrats did with the Biden uh, camp. They didn't do any of that. They were forced to run on issues in a little bit, in, in some respects, because they didn't have the identity picks that they could like point to. Okay. Biden still tried to be like, oh yeah, I hired Kamala because she's a black woman, whatever. It doesn't matter. OK, even in that situation, he literally still was like being a old racist white guy. OK, <laughs> people don't care. 
I think I I don't think, and I'm I'm serious about this. I don't think a single fucking person in the United States of America genuinely turns around and goes, "Yeah, Donald Trump is a misogynist," um, and and like like anyone in the margins. Anyone in the margins, because there are people who obviously are like, yeah, Donald Trump's a misogynist, he's racist, whatever. But I don't think there's a single fucking person in the margins who's like, I don't know who to vote for in this race that's going to turn around and be like, ooh, Donald Trump is a misogynist? I guess he's lost my vote then. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, nobody likes it. Nobody likes this argument. Okay? Described. Please, dear God, have a woman on the stream to talk about this. Absolutely fucking lutely not. Plenty of women do. I don't give a fuck, okay? I don't care. It doesn't matter what you or other women think. What matters is the empirical evidence. What matters is the fucking data. It demonstrably was a fucking failure. Everyone knew he was a misogynist. Shut the fuck up. Okay? Shut up. He literally said he's going to grab women by the pussy. That shit didn't move the needle enough. You know what does move the needle? Abortion restrictions. Obviously, those two things are tied to one another. So bring that to the forefront of the conversation. Okay? Fuck. 52% of white women voted for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton in 2016. 55% of white women voted for Donald Trump over Joe Biden in 2020. Shut the fuck up. Everybody knows he's a misogynist. Holy shit. <laughs> like, who the fuck do you think is going around being like, Donald Trump is a misogynist? <laughs> oh my God. This is dramatically changing my calculation. If you're already fucking voting, if you already voted for Hillary Clinton, if you already voted for Joe Biden, then you already have made up your mind about Donald Trump's misogyny, okay? Among a litany of other issues. Don't just let that hang on its own. Reiterate the position that it's not just Donald Trump's misogyny, it's how that actually ends up harming people, okay? His personal point of view and his 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 worldview in general okay is what harms women how it affects people how it hurts women that's what matters okay What is effective for Kamala Harris? What is effective for her is taking positions that are the positions. He isn't harming women. What? Yeah, dude, totally. Every time like a, like a 14 year old rape victim can't get a fucking abortion in a red state. That's actually not harming women at all. That's actually really positive for women. Okay. Super sick. That would be endorsed by Joe Manchin and by Bernie Sanders being perfectly down the line. I will protect Social Security and Medicare. It is not actually. Mm -hmm. How is bringing up his misogyny a negative thing? Okay, people don't care as you say how the fuck bringing it up hurts the Harris campaign. I don't think you should ever fucking just leave Donald Trump hanging on. He's a misogynist. Okay. It is so stupid. It's just a waste of airspace. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm saying. It's just a waste of airspace. If you want, if you want to fucking actually, if you want to actually make a coherent argument that is going to appeal to those in the fucking margins, then stop just talking about his misogyny. Bring forward the major way in which Donald Trump's misogyny harms women in red states that are now going to more likely vote for the Democrat over the Republican, okay? <laughs> because you might not personally recognize this for some weird fucking reason, and you're only thinking about people that have already made up their minds in your circle, in your orbit, okay? 
but a lot of people need that additional framing because they themselves are misogynistic. This has been an ongoing, consistent narrative that has been a demonstrable fucking failure, okay? It just has not, it has not worked. It doesn't work. White women are the largest women voting block. White people are the largest voter block in this country. It's still 66% of the country. White women are voting in massive numbers. When you got 55% of white women voting for the misogynist, because obviously everyone keeps going, oh my God, he's a misogynist. Oh my God, he's a misogynist. It, he clearly is not working. But you know what is working? Okay. Abortion consistently pointing out the fact that women with ectopic pregnancies can't go out and get this fucking procedure done, get an abortion. That Donald Trump's misogyny alone is one thing, okay? But Donald Trump's misogyny harming women in red states is an entirely different conversation. All of a sudden, it becomes real for you, okay? attacking Trump. What you guys are doing right now is, you know, helping base facts. management right now, but it actually isn't something that moves the I'm needle. Just, just what you see is actually this kind of base just, management exactly. doesn't actually, actually have much of a... Why does pointing out his misogyny not work, but pointing out his blatant racism does? You say women can be internally misogynistic, but it's obvious that people can also be internally racist because there's levels to it. One, I think that misogyny, like patriarchal uh, uh, attitudes, is a higher order. There's like permissible misogyny that is that is running rampant throughout American society in general. Part of that is because 50% of the population is women, whereas 50% of the population isn't black or Latino, okay? So it's a 50-50 split. So it is like way more pervasive and therefore way more permissible to just be like, you know, regular misogynistic. Whereas when you go above a certain point of racism, it tends to gross people out. Just like when you go above a certain point of misogyny, it grosses people out. Like the difference between the difference between Donald Trump um, saying a litany of different things like Kamala Harris is a pretty woman, like that doesn't hit that fucking marker. But JD Vance talking about women having to breed does, right? You've all of a sudden cast aside like the normal existing misogyny that every normal person uh, could potentially experience or feel on a daily fucking basis. And you've now cast aside dog whistles. You are just completely daggering. You're lasering in on the main point of contention. So like 50% misogyny may be acceptable, but 80% isn't, but 50% racism isn't acceptable. So it's the same 50% of acceptable misogyny, but not acceptable for racism. There's a difference of like how far you can go with your racist sentiment before people go, oh, that's gross versus how far you can go with your misogynistic sentiment before people go, oh, that's gross. The stupid idea, non the stupid nonsensical idea that women themselves can't be misogynistic is the reason this country makes no progress in actually improving the lives of women. Just because someone is a woman doesn't mean they're not going to harm other women. Nancy Reagan literally hurt this country as a first lady. Yeah. Material effect. Anti-Trump <laughs> arguments are I mean, I mean, actually so played it's, it's out, just so an, tired. It's an That's interesting point, point that Reinhardt is making about base management on the on the yeah. left, but but really, it seems also that Trump is doing some base management on the right, and there are people in conservative circles who think that the constant attacking of Harris is not working, and this is what they are trying to tell him at this point now publicly. Stop questioning the size of her crowds and start questioning her position when it comes to what did she do as attorney general on crime. When Trump attacks Harris personally rather than on policy, Harris's support among swing voters rises, particularly among women. Not a good idea if you want to attract suburban women who can make or break your campaign. Yeah, Trump calling her a bitch, by the way, which I don't think he'll ever do on in public, like on the record, that goes beyond permissible misogyny, okay? That will probably piss off uh, people. That would be like, 
that would go beyond like the normal uh, order of misogynistic shit that you say. It's just like it's too mask off. It grosses people out. I mean, Madison, I, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, these are people who otherwise would be giving Trump advice. They think that he is on the wrong track here. Well, and I talked about this on your show on Friday about the fact that many Republicans across the country are concerned about the missed opportunities that we continue to see, not just from President Trump, but from other Republicans that are out there on the stump for the president and for some of the down ballot races as well, that they just simply aren't talking about these policies that are going to swing voters in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia. We need to be hearing more about those policies. Like I mentioned, some of the policies that people don't feel the vice president is strong on. These are the things that I don't think we hear enough about. That's what can swing these voters. Well, I can tell you that the evidence that we've seen already in the polling in swing counties like outside of Philadelphia, Bucks County, Delaware County, Chester counties, you see that there are mo moderate women there who are not comfortable, Republican right of center women who are not comfortable with Donald Trump, not comfortable with the attacks on, against women, not comfortable with the extremist agenda in Project 2025 on issues on women's reproductive health and IV. He did not call her that. You're fucking, you got duped by the golf clip. No, he did not call her a fucking bitch, dude. Come on. Oh my God. This clip. <sighs> I, I, stop. Don't, you don't have to do blue and on shit. Okay. There are reports of him doing it behind closed doors. I believe it. But the golf cart clip is not the clip that you think it is. Okay and no-fault divorce and voting rights, all of these things, these attacks on women that are really extreme, they're not comfortable with that. And we're seeing that, and we just saw it today in the, in the New York Times Siena poll, that these places are shifting. Women in these places, in these suburban counties that Donald Trump needs to win, they are not comfortable with that. He very clearly just said bad. They got to stop playing that clip. It's Hill Dog territory. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't think the media has picked that up. It's just like a couple fucking libs living up on the uh on the the kamala momentum all right trump calling out kamala harris and the democrats in that wide-ranging interview with elon musk ty pyro has the highlight hey, good morning to all four of you former president trump and elon musk delving into a roughly two hour long conversation more than one million people joining to listen in to the two men who spent a lot of time discussing inflation watch the thing that they really it's making them angry is what Kamala and Biden have allowed to happen to the economy. It's a disaster with inflation. The inflation, it yeah. doesn't matter what you make. The inflation has eaten you alive. Trump slamming Harris for not doing an extended interview for more than. It is pretty funny, though, like that he's just lisping. Um, I don't I feel. <laughs> I feel like people not on like uh, liberal media, mainstream media or whatever, but people on like social media will most likely will most likely fucking hyper focus on that a little bit. He just I don't know. I thought it was funny. In three weeks. You think Biden could do this interview? Do you think it's not the compression? I thought it was the compression. I think it's because he's uh, he was like talking down. No, I thought it was the compression too, chat. I thought it was audio issues. It's not. You want to know what? <laughs> you want to know how I know it wasn't? Because there's video of him talking. Someone filmed him talking without. Here, look. Both. Biden actually did something that was impossible. Biden actually did something that's impossible. <laughs> Bro, come on. That ain't no compression, dog. Biden actually did something that was impossible. <laughs> Biden. <laughs> it's his dentures, bro. It's because... I don't think you act. He doesn't normally speak like this. You know what I mean? He normally doesn't like speak with his head tilted down so much. So you don't actually ever hear him fucking sound like that. Why did I do this? I think it's possible. Biden actually did something that was impossible. Both sides hate him. 
you know, both sides. Yeah. That was a hard thing to do, unification. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Biden actually did something impossible. <laughs> Biden actually did something that was impossible. Motherfucker kept the Invisalign in, dude. It's Both awesome. Both sides. Uh. <laughs> uh. Is that funny? Yes. Yes. Chatters. Yes. Okay. To the to the Trump supporters. To the Trump supporters who are like, um, how dare you make fun of them? It's not funny. Nah, it is, dude. It's funny, dude. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you.